This video is a follow-up on the previous Raspberry Pi 400 video I did with FreeBSD. There's been a few changes in the time that I made it. I'll show you what I mean. Right, before we get going, I just need to uh, say that I was asked if I could show how to install FreeBSD on a Raspberry Pi and get a desktop up and going. So this is um, part of that request. So if we head on to the FreeBSD website, scroll down to releases, you can see this FreeBSD 13 release. And what we need to do is, we need to go to the SD card images, We need to go all the way down to where it says RPI 3 and 4. That's the one that we want. That's the image that we want. So if we go all the way down to that one there, and it says ARM64 AAAR64 RPI image. And that's what we need. So if we click it to download, it's not a very big file, so it, it doesn't take long to download. And it's finished. Go to the directory in which it was saved and there it is so i'm just going to open a terminal in this directory and the command to uncompress the uh, image file which is that one there um, is using xz so if we type in xz double hyphen verbose just to see what's going on then hyphen d and then the name of the file we want to uncompress um, it will do it. I'm only going to speed through it. It didn't take long, but we'll speed through to the end. Right, now that's done. We're going to list it, and we should see the same file name, but minus the XZ on the end. And there it is. Now we can actually burn it to a SD card or a USB stick. So I'm using DD, um, using these commands. I'm putting 4M. You you might want to try and use less if it doesn't work on yours. I'm also using status equals progress just to show you what's going on. If you're on Windows or any other computer, then you may have to use Belina or uh, whatever available for your system. Right, that's done. And I'm just going to open up this uh, MS DOS boot partition. And in here is a useful file um, called config.txt. And what it does, it, it draws up some parameters. Now, I found through trial and error to comment out the HDMI underscore save equals one. And that allows me to get proper uh, resolution on the uh, monitor that was using the Raspberry Pi 400. Right, we're booting up on the image with USB stick in the Raspberry Pi 400. There is no um, setting up per se. Um, much of it you can be done post install uh, for login there's root and the password is root this will allow you to get started i'm just going to check on the uh, network connecting because more often than not it'll have the wrong address and i'm just going to make a change using bsd config and this is a useful utility if you need to make any changes uh, for any aspect of your install really so, okay, it's picked up the Raspberry Pi 4 Ethernet. Yeah, should be one in the middle there. That should be fine. Uh, go back. Um, I don't want to bring up the connection yet. Just change this uh, gateway. Sometimes it gives me the right one, sometimes it's one slightly out. And I'll change this. You won't have to do this on your system. Um, it's just one of the quirks I have on my network. Right. And, yeah, bring it up now. I think it should be working fine. And this little bit allows you to change the host name if you want to. So I'm going to be using this uh, Raspberry Pi 400 as a uh, secondary or third machine. There we go. Just going to reboot. You don't have to reboot, of course. Uh, I like to do so. False of habit, really. We'll fast forward this. There we go. Right, I'll just check it again. If config. 
Yeah, it's all perfect now. And the obligatory pinging of Google. I bet they get sick of people doing that. They are not too bad. Might clear the screen. Just to show you that I'm on FreeBSD 13 on the Raspberry Pi. There you go. There's your name. And we'll just check for some updates. There won't be because this has only just been released, but you never know. No, I didn't think there would be. And we're just going to bootstrap the PKG. There we go. Now then, there's been one or two additions since the last time uh, last did this. There's far more packages available, and many of the packages which were missing uh, last time I tried FreeBSD in my last video. Oh, look at that! Yeah, there's about about two thousand new packages. There we go. There it was, two six seven one four. Now it's two eight nine six one. So there's been quite a few additions, and many of the packages which were missing previously are now there. So that is really good. Search for Firefox this time. Yeah, brilliant. Look at that. So Firefox is there. Latest version as well. And we'll have a look for XFCE because that was missing last time. Yep, I can tell by looking at all this. That's brilliant. And we'll have a search for Mate. Yeah, it's there as well. This is excellent. That means now we can have a viable... Uh, fairly modern desktop running on the 400. So I'm going to start the installation process. Xorg, Mate, Firefox, Silfeed, Inkscape, Audacity. We have no sound device, but I'll put it in anyway. Simple screen recorder, which was a surprise to me. And LibreOffice. Uh, there's quite a bit to download, so uh, yes. And We'll let it do its thing. Obviously, we're going to skip to the end. Even fast forward, it would take a long time. Right, there we go. Now we're going to create a normal user. Uh, without this, um, you know, we'll be stuck on root all the time. So, uh, skip that bit, but I'll put my normal name. I'll log in, and there we are. So, I'm just going to create the X init RC so I can actually get a desktop up and going. And if you know the format of this, uh, you, this comes as no surprise. Start X. And there we go. But as you can see, the resolution is horrible. And there's no way to change it unless you do this. As you saw at the beginning, you have your config.txt, comment out, HDMI safe, then reboot. You'll get the proper resolution that befits your monitor. Some of it is pretty small uh, for demonstration purposes, but it's correct. Uh, it's the correct size. In this case, it's 1280 by 1024. And here's the top. Uh, it's all chugging along nicely. Of course, we're only using a very small amount of memory at the moment because we haven't really started anything up. And for those that are interested, for those that are interested, we'll have a look at the uh, directory structure. There we go. Right. We're going to start X again. And in the meantime, I've actually changed X in the RC to point to XFCE. There we go. Very nice. Looks very nice and clean. I've obviously uh, added a wallpaper. It would be nice if you got this by default, but no, you don't. So XFCE is fairly light in resources and feels quite brisk um, running on the Raspberry Pi 400. And everything opens as usual. Nice and quick. Feels very fluid, very smooth. Very good. Yeah. So it moves on the screen very nicely. There doesn't seem to be any jaggedness or tearing. And of course, the menu is fairly standard. You get the XFCE uh, utilities mixed in with the um, one or two things that I've added as well during install. And multimedia. Yeah, there is an issue with uh, some KDE based um, applications. I'll show you that later. And there's the about, if you want to know. Um, Cortex-A72. 3.8 gigabytes. And there's the graphics for LNVM pipe. We're on XFC version 4.16. Very good. 
going to show you some nice NeoFetch. There we go. So it's the same information which we previously but I like the way it's laid out on this. And there's a resolution look, 1280 by 1024. Very good. And we'll start with the browser to see the performance. Now I know that uh, on Raspbian or Raspberry Pi OS, the uh, Chromium or Chrome is hardware accelerated um, on the Raspberry Pi OS. I don't think, uh, which I haven't installed it in this occasion, I don't think Chrome on this uh, in FreeBSD or indeed Firefox is going to be hardware accelerated. So the performance won't be too great when we come to test it on some videos. Uh, simple screen recorder, talking about videos, simple screen recorder. Uh, I was surprised that it was actually added, um, which I'm glad it is because it makes making videos a bit easier. I'm using a capture card at the moment, but later on I'll be using a simple screen recorder, in which we're going to test um, right now. I'm just going to record this simple thing. It's nothing too taxing, and uh, maybe I should have gone for a more visual uh, demonstration, but this will do. I just want to test playback. I will save it there. Come out of that. Going to, uh, yep. Yeah. Not the world's most dynamic video, but it shows you that the colours were correct and it recorded everything as it should. Right. Let's delete that, don't need it. And empty the bin. Bing, there we go. Back to Firefox. I want to show you the uh, the video online its performance. Um, I wouldn't imagine it's going to be any great shakes, but we'll see. I'll test it on my site first. Uh, Rob Nuggy. Uh, no. There you go. In fact, I'll show you the. Let's pause that. I'll show you the last video I did with uh, Raspberry Pi 400. Uh, advertisements. I can already tell that there is some delay in the video resizing itself. And yeah, I'm trying to click the controls, but it's a little bit. There we go. Yeah. Uh, it's a little bit jerky when I try and play back in 1080. I think it works flawlessly in 720, but 1080 it does seem to struggle. We'll try it on a little bit more demanding uh, video. There we go, I'll try 1080. I'm not going to try above 1080. Oh, it's struggling. A bit sluggish. Yeah, it's not going to do it. Like I say, if you're using Raspberry Pi OS, no doubt Chromium would manage then. Uh, but it is struggling now. We'll just, uh, if we can drop it down to 720. Yeah, that's a lot better. It's a little bit more. It's a lot smoother. Well, well, I mean, you know, it's just one of those things. I think as time goes on and perhaps uh, software is enhanced a little, maybe it'll be a bit more smoother or maybe hardware acceleration will come into it. I don't know. It looks fine. Right, okay, well... Just checking it's Creative Commons. I'm not going to get copyright strike for it. Right, that's that. Not too bad. And what we're we going to try now? Uh, all right, LibreOffice. Because I think um, one of the main things that I'll be doing on this will be some light office work, uh, uh, browsing, etc. I would have liked to do some video editing on it, but I don't think that's going to be possible for a while yet. I'm just going hello. I always put that. There we go. Uh, look at top now. Memory usage has gone up a bit, which is to be expected considering that we've been using browsers and office suites. I 
I'm going to log out and we're going to try something else. And in this occasion, we're going to try Mate. It's a little bit more resource heavy, um, but it's not too bad actually. I'll show you. Right, again, I filmed it very similar, so there's not much difference between this and XFCE on Lux department, except for the top and bottom bar and the missing dock. Uh, again, with uh, I won't mount it because I haven't told it to you. But again, everything is uh, snappy and smooth. Quick response. Uh, the system is not slouchy using Mate. And here's the resource use. Yeah, it's not bad at all. Going to try Caden Live. This is the problem I found with all KDE based applications. Look. There you go. It's the problem with OpenCV. Um, it's not recognizing the system it's running on, so it's not supporting the uh, Raspberry Pi or ARM at the moment. And there's an awful lot of KDE software which is reliant on that. So at the moment, I can't use OpenShot if I can type in the right name. OpenShot QT. It looks like it might work, and then it gives you the same error. So yes, um, fortunately, um, video editing is not a thing at the moment. And there we go. Apart from that, though, Mate runs very nice indeed. Next, we're going to install After Step. I'm going to try a few more different uh, window managers, actually. That's quite graphically intensive for an old one. And we're going to also install ICWM, which is super lightweight. There we go. Right, that's done. We'll just exit and we'll edit the uh, exit in the RC. Just uh, comment out that. And we need to add ICWM and after step. Okay, so the next one we're going to try out is ICWM. Now, ISWM hasn't changed much over the years it's been out, but it's, uh, it's made improvements. And as you can see, the menu system is basically the same. You can either get a menu or right click on the desktop, it gives you the same result. You get lots of themes already installed, and some of them really have got a retro feel. And there's all the software that I installed earlier. And everything runs really quickly on ISWM. It's, um, it's quite remarkable. I think it's well suited for the Raspberry Pi. There's the LibreOffice, runs very nice. And the browser. Again, it runs fairly quickly. Everything feels speedy, I haven't um, speeded anything up. Everything is snappy and quick. Yeah, ISWM. I think that the version that we have is just one point release behind. So I'm just going to have a quick look. Let's go into uh, terminal and do a package search. It should tell us the version number. Right? PKG search. Nice to be, um, yeah, 2.3.1. And the one that's on the website is 2.3.2. .2. So, yeah, practically brand new, and it, it came out recently, so give it a week or two and it'll be in the uh, it'll be in the package repository. Now we're going to install some extra themes, and uh, this really is quite a few. And... Yeah, let's go down to themes. And there's a lot here. And you can tell by looking at the the uh, menu bar at the top there, the window bar. Uh, so I'll just make it a bit more clearer. So we'll try another one. 
and again, there's a retro uh, apple feel there. Try another, that one. That's like a motive uh, based one. And we'll try... Uh, okay, the plastic one. Yeah, I like these themes very much. I mean, these are very reminiscent of what I used to use when I used to try Linux out in uh, Red Hat days. Very nice. Yeah. So, I still be WEM. As good as always. And one seriously I'm considering using on the Raspberry Pi. Right, okay, we're going to try After Step now. And After Step is something which I've not really used um, that often now. Uh, I used to use it a long time ago, but it's, it's completely different. For an oldish uh, desktop, it is quite graphical intensive. There's a lot of um, transparencies, etc. And it feels a little bit sluggish on the uh, Pi. In fact, the browser actually is uh, quite sluggish. I think this is something that's best suited to a full-size desktop PC. So yes, very nice. Um, I exit that. There are, of course, other ones which I haven't covered. There's Norm 3, which uh, I'm not even going to bother to try to run because I don't like Norm 3 and uh, it'll probably run very slowly. But it is uh, it is there for you to install if you want to do that. And the other one, of course, is KDE 5. Now, with the issue regarding OpenCV, um, I don't think that's going to work. So um, hopefully they get that fixed and then I can put KDE on. I think that's something that will work. Um, fairly well, because it's not as um, heavy as it used to be. Right, I'm just going to put Mate back on. And there we go. I think this is one I'm going to stick with for the time being. Uh, this and possibly Ice WM until they get uh, KDE 5 fixed. Right, uh, thoughts. Well, this is the video that I should have done at the beginning, but I really did rush the one out um, to try and catch the wave of the FreeBSD release. And because the Raspberry Pi had uh, become a tier one, which is uh, very nice. So I wanted to try it out. So this, uh, so what do I think? Well, again, I just reiterate what I said on the first video that uh, FreeBSD and Raspberry Pi and ARM uh, have a great future together. The FreeBSD on the Raspberry Pi runs very, very well. And I, at that particular video, some of the packages weren't available yet. So the really the only desktop I could use was a uh, Motive Window Manager. And the only browser available um, was the Otter browser. But now things have changed. Uh, all the usual packages that you expect uh, in a modern OS is there. There's Firefox, there's Mate, there's other desktops. And for me, surprisingly, simple screen recorder, simply because I didn't think it'd be uh, up to the job, but it can, and brilliant. So I think the FreeBSD developers have done a great job. And, uh, like I said in the first video, I think, you know, thanks to the FreeBSD Foundation, which have sponsored a lot of the work that's gone into the release. And now that you've got all them full packages, oh man, this is great. It's uh, It opens a lot of possibilities, and... Although I couldn't use KDE 5, which is a shame, that will come later. That'll be fixed. Uh, that'll be fixed later. I could happily use a Raspberry Pi 400 running FreeBSD 13 as a desktop uh, to replace this power-hungry machine that I have. I mean, the power consumption of Raspberry Pi is is, is minimal. It's minuscule, you know. And uh, given the fact that there are some limitations, of course, it's not the uh, it's not the perfect setup. But it's pretty close. And as time goes on, things are just going to get better. Anyway, the tip regarding the uh, config.txt um, about commenting out the HDMI safe option is something which on the Raspberry Pi 3, uh, which uh, at the moment I'm looking at as well, FreeBSD didn't need that. I left it as it was, and the resolution was just fine. But on a Raspberry Pi 4, 
on multiple monitors, the result was always the same, that the desktop was way out of um, proper size. And so disabling that particular option in the config was the only way that I could fix it. Your experience may be different, and if it is, then don't touch it. But if you do come across your oversize uh, icons and the resolution which is too low, then uh, this is the way that you fix it. Anyway, hopefully this video was helpful in some way, showing how good FreeBSD is on the ARM and Raspberry Pi. And uh, I hope to do more videos on the Raspberry Pi and FreeBSD in the future. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Well done if you've made it to the end of the video, and if you've found it useful in any way, then please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to make sure you don't miss future videos, then please click the subscribe button and the notification bell. This helps the channel grow so that I can keep on making content that helps the FreeBSD community grow as well. Oh,